is a very diverse country. I mean, uh, people from so many faiths, uh, caste, creed, right? I mean, so it must be very difficult to draft constitution for such a diverse country. I mean, do you do you see that happening in the history, or probably my assertion is wrong? You mean the the challenge of writing a constitution for India, for free yeah. India, a country as diverse as India? Yeah. Um, well, of course, it was a challenging task, and and many great scholars have uh, written about that. Um, and you know, one of the exciting things at the moment is how many young scholars like. Rohit Day and Madhav Gosla are uh, revising um, ideas about the Indian constitution and finding new information about its making. Um, after all, it takes quite a long time, um, you know, 1947, 1950. Um, and, uh, and the challenge is deeper because simultaneously, uh, India has to become a post-colonial society. So it's astonishing that, you know, it's it's produced uh, with all the skill and, and, and effort that goes into it um, in a relatively short time. And of course, it's a huge document, as you know better than I. What, over 500 pages? I don't know if it's still the longest constitution in the world, um, but um, it is a very long constitution. Uh, what helps, um, and this is often seen as controversial by some, is that in, like so many constitution writers, the Indian lawyers and politicians and civil servants who draft this great constitution borrow. They borrow huge amounts from different parts of the world. They borrow from British legislation in the 1930s. They borrow from Australia. They borrow from Canada, the United States, and so forth. Um, and, you know, this is often criticized. Uh, and of course, it may change in the future. But in fact, if you look at it historically, this happens over and over again. L lots of countries act this way uh, because ideas, you know, they they read about other countries' constitutions. They say, "Oh, that's a good idea about the separation of powers. We're gonna we're gonna use it in our constitution." Um, and in fact, in some constitutions, particularly ones that are, are drafted very quickly, you find not just obvious plagiarism of this kind, but sometimes the entire word and paragraph structure uh, gets duplicated. I mean, the, the Norwegian constitution of 1814, uh, which after the United States constitution is the second oldest to survive, um, is just an essay in plagiarism. And, you know, they take whole sentences and chunks from France, from America, uh, from Belgium and so forth. Um, and they just bung it into their own constitution. But it's how you borrow from others and what you choose to borrow and how you intermesh this with your own legal traditions and political priorities that makes a constitution work. And, you know, this was the great achievement of the Indian legislators that, yes, they borrowed a lot, but they interweave these borrowings with certain indigenous traditions, legal priorities, uh, ideals that they wanted to incorporate. Um, and, you know, uh, it's not a perfect constitution, none of them are, but it, it has lasted thus far.